Hey there, Solar Bears fans. Jesse Liebman here, bringing you once again another player signing via Zoom. Uh, this player joining Orlando for his first full season. He was acquired back in early March near the ECHL trade deadline. Got into two games and scored a power play goal in the final game of the season for Orlando, what ultimately was a 3-1 win over South Carolina. Uh, bringing back once again forward Tad Kozen. Uh, Tad, uh, I guess this is technically round two for us uh, attempting to, to get this Zoom interview. I understand that you're kind of up in the wilderness of Saskatchewan, or at least you were uh, these last few weeks. Uh, but now finally you're uh, in civilization. You've got some Wi-Fi connectivity. So glad you could be joining us. How are you doing right now? I'm doing good, doing good, enjoying the summer and uh, back to civilization for a bit before I head back up north and uh, do some fishing, some working. So uh, getting rid of my phone for the rest of the week. So it's uh, it's pretty nice to get away from it and just kind of turn your brain off and enjoy some family time and do some work and uh, be at the lake. You're in your mid to late 20s. So mo most guys your age, uh, they're constantly on the on the phone. So for you, how easy is it for you to be able to unplug or how, how, how often do you do this every off season? Uh, I like to try to get to the lake every second weekend, just to take some buddies and stuff up there. But uh, obviously, this summer's been a little different. But uh, with uh, I work for my dad in a construction company, so we've had a cabin up there since I mean, my mom's grandparents. They built it back in the '70s, so it's uh, I'm used to it every summer, and I actually enjoy getting up there for a couple of weeks every summer, just to unplug. And uh, I'm not a big cell phone guy. I'm not a big technology guy. This stuff's all pretty new to me, so. Uh, we uh not a lot of cell service right they probably this is probably the worst province for cell service so when you get up north it's it's kind of nice just unplug and enjoy life and uh not have to sit on your phone and enjoy the company and meeting friends and just chatting with people well uh you've certainly been keeping busy though when you get back to kind of the, the rest of civilization like you said uh trying to get in some some skating uh, you were doing that earlier today with your brother uh and a couple of other buddies uh in the area uh how how easy has it been for you to find ice time and continue your off-season training in Saskatchewan this time of year, especially in light of everything that's going on in the world. Yeah, it's it's been tough. But I think this was week three of skating, and that's when they finally opened the rinks back up. And like the first couple of weeks, we weren't allowed to use the dress rooms or anything. We were dressing in the parking lots or dressing outside and uh, going in just to tire skates. But now we can use the dress rooms and just to get dressed, but you can't shower or anything, so you gotta you gotta leave stinky. But uh, I mean, we're making it work. It's I mean, with all this stuff going on, I'd rather be safe than sorry because our, our health is number one and so is everybody else around us. So whatever you can do to prevent everything from spreading or blowing up again is, is what you're going to do. And as far as training, I mean, gyms are starting to open up, but I've been doing a lot of home workouts and uh, a lot of running outside, just, just trying to do my best as I want to be as, as safe as I can too, not to put other people at risk. Well, you're preparing for your third full season of pro hockey, your first full season with the Solar Bears, as we said, after your, your acquisition in early March. And for you, I, I feel like you might have been in the unluckiest position to getting traded from a organization, arriving with that new organization, barely even having a moment to get settled in your new city as the team was on the road when they originally acquired you playing up in Atlanta. You get to Orlando, you play a game, and then – hey, season's canceled, head home. Uh, what, what was that period of time uh, in roughly a span of almost a, a week and a half, maybe two weeks tops? Uh, how, how did that ultimately pan out for you? Uh, what was it like trying to get settled with a, a new team here in Orlando? It was probably the craziest 10 days of my life. Uh, like I, I drove, drove all the way from Kansas City to Atlanta, met the team, and then got to Orlando, which was about a 17-hour drive. And then uh, – didn't really do much unpacking that week and kind of just got to know the guys and hung out and enjoyed the sunshine again, being back down South. And uh, I mean, by every day I said, okay, I'm going to do a little bit of unpacking every day. And I said, by Tuesday, Tuesday night, I'm going to be done unpacking and uh, play Wednesday and then I'll be settled in ready to go. And that, and the next year we play Wednesday and then I'm packing back up on the weekend again. So it was pretty crazy. I mean, uh, it was kind of a whirlwind. And then, I mean, it was 4,100 kilometers home. So I did that and, three and a half days so I mean I uh <laughs> kind of just hit hit the pedal to the metal to try to get home because they were talking about the borders closing and that so I just didn't really want to get stuck down there and be closer to family as you did we really didn't know where this was going to go I mean I think it went a lot better than we thought it was going to especially in Canada and uh yeah it was it was a whirlwind going from packing to unpacking to packing back up and having to drive to get home I mean it's uh it, it was a crazy 10 days that's for sure 
Absolutely. And with, with the, the quick turnaround for you, ultimately deciding to come back to Orlando for what will be a full season during the 2020-21 campaign, uh, what conversations did you have with Drake Burahowski and assistant coach Jared Stahl uh, in terms of making you feel comfortable that you would feel that you would be wanted in this locker room and, and want to come back? Um, I think like a big part of it was uh, like being in South Carolina, like the, the years before, I, I know it's a big rivalry and stuff, but they just kind of knew what kind of player I was. And we obviously spent a lot of time in Orlando. So it, it was nice having the, I was accustomed to being in Orlando already, which was really nice to go to. And they, they just made me feel really, really comfortable even in the week that I was there and uh, uh, just getting traded. I mean, obviously, obviously it, it, it was a whirlwind. Like I said previously that the, the 10 days, it was pretty crazy. And, they just made me feel so comfortable and so welcome. And uh, when they gave me the opportunity to come back, I, I had to jump at it. I, I think it's a great organization. It's a great city. And um, when it's minus 40 here in the wind, I mean, I, I can't complain about that either. As far as the two games you managed to get into, uh, especially in particular the March 11th game against South Carolina, uh, it seemed that the team was kind of at a turning point uh, after struggling for the previous two weeks, finally getting a win against the best team in the league uh, in South Carolina. Uh, for you, how comfortable did you feel getting acclimated to, to your new teammates, many of whom are already announced and committed to coming back for yet another season? Uh, what has you optimistic and feeling good about heading into this coming season? I think just the conversations I've had with like, like with Stasi and Drake, um, I mean, the guys that they're bringing back were really core guys on the team this year, and they were they were great guys when I got down there. So seeing like the guys that are coming back, it's a uh, it's a big confidence booster, and, and it's good to see that because uh, they made me feel just so comfortable, and and they had some great leaders in that dressing room. So it just it got me excited to come back and be a part of that for a full season instead of just my my two game stint that I was there for, and just got kind of used to it. So I think it was just. The, the how comfortable they made me feel and uh, like the guys that are coming back it's a really core group and uh, it, this roster's looking pretty good so far uh, as far as preparing for next season not a lot of fans probably got to get too familiar with your playing style for for the solar bears though as you said you had some time with south carolina's organization previously so fans kind of familiar but for those that aren't how, how would you describe your overall game and what have you been working on this summer uh, now that you've gotten into the on-ice training to to prepare for the season and try to improve your game as best as possible? Uh, I would probably just say I'm uh, I'm kind of an agitator. I like to get underneath the other guy's skin and uh, like to like to go to the net and bang around in there. I like to play – I don't think I'm that – I like to play bigger than I am. I'm not a big guy, but I think I play a little bit bigger than I am. And just been working on, like, some shooting, some more skill stuff, getting better around the net, kind of in tight. Uh, Stuff that I think will really, really help because playing down south, there's a lot of bouncing pucks, especially on the softer ice and the hotter climate. So working on some of that stuff is, uh, I think it's really going to pay off. Well, Tad, uh, we appreciate you taking the, the time out of your schedule and the brief time that you are uh, you are home to, to join us here virtually. Uh, Tad Cozen joining the Solar Bears for, a, for his first full season. It'll be sec season number two in the City Beautiful when you get to the, the nitty gritty, uh, but we're glad to have you back uh, again. Looking forward to seeing you this fall uh, when training camp opens. Yeah, I'm super excited down there and can't wait, and uh, hopefully it's sooner than later.